One, two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, 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 I What's up guys? In this video we're going to be talking about 10 months in on the Innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion Pro 20 gallon tank. As we can see we're going to go over the corals first to talk a little bit about what's changed and how I've reached final form on pretty much where I want the tank to be. So as I just mentioned, in my opinion the tank is pretty much in final form. I might add some more coral down the road but everything is really running pretty much on autopilot at this point. I still do a five gallon water change every two weeks, but besides that, everything's pretty much where I want it. I might add some more coral down the road, but I'm really happy with where things are at. Not a lot of maintenance, not a lot for me to worry about, so let's dive into the coral and talk about what I've added since you guys saw the tank last. So the last video I posted during the start of the pandemic, my rocks were still white. I didn't have a lot of coralline algae. Um, I looked like I just had a couple frags here and there. As you can see, things have really picked up and matured since the last time I posted. The best way you can see that is through the screen star polyp GSP right here. It basically looks like a bush, but honestly, it's still one of my favorite corals. I know people hate it because it grows so quickly and grows all over, but I think the color is really pretty shows a lot of motion in the tank and is still one of my favorite corals you can also see next to that i have a long tentacle plate coral i'll show that in more detail here in a bit but one thing you'll also notice throughout this video is that i have coralline algae all over my rocks now that's a great sign because it shows that my tank is matured here you can see my leather coral that has grown out a little bit as well as a mushroom coral sitting right underneath it and then kind of behind that you can see my brain coral that is also growing out again all these videos you can or all these uh, shots you can see that there's coralline algae all over the rocks a great sign of a mature system next up here I have a cans these are super pretty I love the color on these um, another one of my favorite corals I really want to get more of these if anything and kind of build out an acan garden here in the front some of my favorite corals you can kind of see some splatter hammer above them i'll get more into that here in a minute again i'm just so happy that coralline algae is growing everywhere it took me forever to get it to grow but i'll talk about more about what i think really helped out with that here in a bit up next you can see i picked up some trumpet coral here from my local fish store I love these because they're relatively easy to keep, they bring some great color, and they just look unique. Um, they don't show a lot of movement, obviously, like Euphelia would, like you can see in the background here, I have uh, what looks like some sort of hammer kind of swaying in the water, but I think they're really cool looking, and um, you can also see I have an urchin here next to that as well, and some more coral above that. This is one of my torch corals I picked up from a local reefer. These are always, you know, like everybody talks about torches. They're like what everybody wants. Yes, they're cool. Yes, they're pretty. I would never spend some of the money. I see some of these things priced for like three, four hundred dollars. Even a hundred dollars to me is a lot for a coral just because, you know, if anything goes wrong in the tank, it could die. So I don't remember paying a lot for this, but, you know, I do see why everybody loves these corals. So this is another uh, coral I picked up from a local reefer. This is a ReefWise long tentacle plate coral. He actually picked it up from, I guess, ReefWise, which is a coral breeder somewhere in the US and happened to have it as a little frag. So I only actually bought this for, I think, 30 or 40 bucks. It must have been the size of a penny when I bought it, but now it's grown out and you know probably worth more. So I consider that a good investment, another really pretty coral. Here are some splatter coral that I got from another reefer around the area. Um, they're both the same and I have a hammer in the back that I got from Austin Aqua Farms, a great place to look for corals if you're interested. All right, so here is a top-down view of both of my torches. Again, one was from a local reefer, the other was from Austin Aqua Farms. 
love them, great place to look for corals. You can kind of also see from this shot my rock structure and how I left that back area open for flow. So that way I put my MP10 in one section so it was tons of flow in that back area and kind of creates one big circle of flow around the tank. That helps keep down detritus, but that was kind of my plan with my rock structure at the time. Finally, I'm gonna give one more overview of kind of all the corals all together. Again, I love that Acan, so much color in that, uh, that one piece, but this is kind of the placement I put for everything. You're gonna to have to mess around with placement to really find where corals open up and where they like to be based on flow, lighting, a lot of things like that. You can see after taking a bit of time, I figured out, okay, where is everything like? Where is everything opening up? And this was final placement. <music> All right, next let's talk about fish because that has changed a bit. I obviously still have my tried and true, very regular two clowns. I don't think you can have a reef tank truly without having clowns in it. Um, I also got a Midas Blenny. You can see him running around here. By far the most expensive fish in the tank. I got him for like, I think $50. I'm always worried that he will jump. He has jumped out of the tank before. You can also see my yellow Watchman Gobi and his tiger pistol shrimp. Hiding under some rocks is a firefish. He's getting bullied right now by the Midas Blenny. Um, again, here's a better shot of my yellow watchman. He rarely comes out of his cave. You also saw there I had a uh, bluefish. I forget what they're called, but it was super cheap, like 10 bucks. My buddy wanted me to get it because he was really into the tank when he came over. So I said, fine, I'll pick it up for you. But that's pretty much the stocking. I think I'm pushing it right now for a 20 gallon. Everybody seems happy, everybody seems okay, but that's the max amount of fish I think I can get away with in this tank without too much aggression. I do feed pretty heavily just so everybody gets food. You also can see on the one side, I am supplementing with uh, algae sheets now, and the Midas Blenny loves that. So does the uh, snails I have in the tank as well and the urchins, they all like those algae sheets. So I've supplemented that just to keep aggression down and keep everybody happy, but that's kind of where we're at on tank inhabitants. With that being said, I really think I'm pushing my luck right now with the tank inhabitants I have in the tank. I'm probably gonna be taking the firefish out and giving him to a fellow reefer just because he's getting bullied by the Midas and is always hiding in his little rock cave. He is eating, which is good. I don't see any visible nipping or anything like that, but I just don't think it's fair that any times he comes out of his cave that the Midas comes after him. So probably gonna take him out and give him to another reefer. I think it's really important that you watch behavior and make sure everybody's eating, nobody's getting nipped at, because remember these are living animals and we do have a responsibility to make sure everybody's happy, healthy, and not stressed. Finally, I'll add for the stocking list, I only have turbo snails in the tank right now and urchins as my cleanup crew. I'll give you one more shot of the firefish just to show that he is actually out and about and you can see him. So next up on the list is equipment and there has been a lot of changes here as well. Some of you may have noticed for starters um, when we're talking about flow that I actually changed out the nozzles that the tank came with for random flow generators. That has been a great help in just adding flow to the tank. I'm not going to go over everything but just some other things I've changed recently. Uh, as you can see I did get the Innovative Marine ATO Reservoir. Always something I wanted, just didn't have the money for it, but aesthetically I thought it looked nicer and really just put everything together. As you can also see, um, some other things I'm running on the tank that I think are really important are a heater controller. It is that white brick with the blue light. That has an audible alarm as well as will flash a light if the heater were ever to fail. Kind of just a look inside this shelving of the tank itself. You can see I have everything hooked up um, to smart Wi-Fi enabled power strip so that way I can get notifications on my phone, turn anything off remotely if anything goes wrong. I also do have a camera I use in there uh, just to monitor everything and make sure if lights are blinking or if an audible alarm goes off that I get it on my phone. 
And also if I'm away from the tank, I can pull that camera out so I can watch everything remotely while I'm gone. So moving on, another thing that I really want to mention is you can see I have a water alarm in the tank. I live in an apartment and this is something I always worry about is a leak or if for some reason something goes wrong, water going everywhere. So for like 25 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's, you can get one of these battery powered water alarms. It has a little sensor that's on the ground and if water were ever to leak out of the tank, it'll start beeping like crazy, kind of like a smoke detector so you know that water is going on the ground. Besides that, this is where my controllers are at. At one point I did have a particle board up just to hide the wires, but honestly it was just getting in the way, especially when I had to change things out, so I just took it down. So next I'm gonna give you a quick look of the sump. You can see I'm still using the same lid that came with the tank. My Midas Blenny and my Firefish have gotten through this netting, just FYI. So here's my sump. You can kind of see that's the doser that's going into the sump. My ATO controller, there's my Fuge. I am running the UV sterilizer on this tank as well. I can't remember if I mentioned that last time, but. And then the random flow generators, you can see here the flow in the tank. I think these were definitely worth the money. Finally, my secret sauce. Tropic Marin All for Reef. I can't recommend this stuff enough if you want your tank to be pretty much set up for success. I'm using an X1 doser to dose it. Cannot recommend it enough. You should look into it. And that's it. That's the update on the tank so far. Like I said, it's pretty much an autopilot at this point. I mean, between the ATO, all the automation and all of my equipment, the fact that it doses itself, it feeds itself, the lights are all automatic, the tank pretty much takes care of itself. I can get away with not really doing anything to it for about two and a half weeks is what I can get away with with five gallons of fresh water for the ATO. But like I said, five gallon water changes every two weeks, that's about it. Clean the glass, make sure everybody's happy and healthy, and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next update. Leave comments below on what you liked, didn't like, anything you want to see, anything I can tell you about, but this has been a journey, 10 months in the making, and you know, I'll add some more coral as I go along, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. I'll do my best to update you guys as new things come along. Let me know if you want equipment updates or reviews or anything like that. Um, I really do this channel just for fun. and. I have a friend of mine who's in my life and has always been saying I need to update more. So I'm gonna do my best to update the best I can, but be safe, take care of yourselves, take care of your tanks. See you guys next time.